Welcome back to today's episode on Chemistry Made Easy with Bryce Edo. In today's lesson, I'll be solving revision questions on organic chemistry. Now you can see the first question here. It says cellulose and starch can be classified as one of the following. A. Hydrocarbon. B. Sugar. C. Carbohydrates. And D. Alkaloid. Now, it must be noted that cellulose and starch are classified under carbohydrates. That is the answer. Cellulose and starch are carbohydrates. Now, for hydrocarbon, cellulose and starch are not hydrocarbons because hydrocarbons are compounds that contain carbon and hydrogen only. Now, looking at cellulose and starch, when we check the structure, we see other elements like oxygen. So that is why they can be hydrocarbon. And you know, the smallest unit of carbohydrates are sugars. Okay, it must be noted that cellulose and starch are formed from non-reducing sugars. So cellulose and starch are classified under carbohydrates. So this is the correct answer to the question. They are classified under carbohydrate. They can be hydrocarbons. Now, moving over to the next question. This question says CH3COOH reacting with CH3OH gave us this compound and water. Now, the first question you ask yourself, what is the name of this compound? Or what group of compound does this compound belong to? Now, this compound, looking at it, it is an acid, but it is an organic acid. It is an organic acid called alkanoic acid. Now, this organic acid, which is called alkanoic acid, reacting with this compound in the form of a base, is going to give us, this compound is called an ester plus water. So, what is the name of this reaction? This reaction is not a neutralization reaction because for neutralization reaction, acid will react with a base to form salt and water. But now, this is an organic acid and this is an alkanol or you say an alcohol giving us ester plus water. So the name of this reaction is called esterification. Okay, it is called esterification. It is not called hydrolysis. So this is the answer to the question. All of these questions must be noted in the forthcoming jam exam. So take note of these questions. Now, question three says the general formula for carboxylic acid is the general formula for carboxylic acid is basically all of these are the structural formula. So the general formula for carboxylic acid is given to be R O C O O. So this is the general formula for carboxylic acid. Now let's check each of these options to know the correct answer. You can see here I wrote arrow. So basically all of them have arrow. The next is carbon. So let's check the other. Okay, basically all of them have carbon after arrow, but option D does not. This is just different. This compound is an ether. Okay, or you say it is an alkoxy alkane. This compound is an ether. Or you say it's called an alkoxy, an alkoxy alkane. Now, the next of them is oxygen. So, arrow bonds to carbon, okay, and laser bonds to oxygen with a double bond. So, that is for this. So, we explain this. But looking at this, this has um same representation, and this also have same representation, and this also have same representation. So, after this carbon bonds to oxygen, this same carbon will bond to another oxygen. You can see from the representation. This same carbon is bonded to another oxygen atom. After bonding to another oxygen atom, it gave us the last, which is hydrogen. So looking at these structures carefully, the one that actually represents that general formula is option B. Okay? Because option B for option A, the last of them was arrow. But option B, the last of them was what? Hydrogen. You can see it here. And option C uh, basically does not have any other hydrogen at all. So this will not be the answer. And this does not even correlate 
So the point I'm trying to make here is this. This compound is called an alkanone. Or you say it's called a ketone. So that is for option A. Why this is the carboxylic acid? Okay, this is the carboxylic acid. And option C is an alkanal. Or you say it is called an aldehyde. You say it's called an aldehyde. Why this is an eta or an alkoxy alkane. So this correlates to the answer, which is option B. So this is the general formula for what? A carboxylic acid. Now, looking at question 4, it says, the functional group represented in the compound below is, the functional group represented in the compound below is, this is the compound. Now, they're not asking us which of these compounds here represents this uh, compound. So you have to check this compound carefully. Now, this group from carbon here to this carbon represents an alkyl group. So all of this here represents an alkyl group, and that alkyl group is given with the symbol arrow. So all of this group here represents an alkyl group. Now this alkyl group is bonding to carbon, and this carbon is bonding to oxygen or, and this same carbon is bonding to hydrogen. Now what? Compound has the general formula. Now, if you look at question three we just solved, you can see that option C correlated to what we just uh, deduced now. And this option C, we called it an alkan now, also called an aldehyde. So, what compound will be this compound if it's called an alkan now? Because alkan now, they have the general formula to be RCHO. You can see this is same as saying RCHO. Because arrow is bonding to carbon, and carbon is bonding to hydrogen, and same carbon is bonding to oxygen with a double bond. So this is the general formula for alkanal. So this compound correlates an alkanal. So this must be noted. Now let's quickly move over to question 5. The question says, natural rubber is made by polymerization of... So they are asking us, what are the monomer units? that makes up natural rubber. Monomer units means the, small, the smaller units that makes up this uh, polymer called natural rubber. And that is called 2-methylbuta-1,3-diene. 2-methylbuta-1,3-diene. It must be noted that 2-methylbuta-1,3-diene is also called isoprene. 2 methyl buta 1 3 diene is also called isoprene. These are the monomer units that makes up the polymer called natural rubber. For instance, we are asked, what are the monomer units that makes up artificial rubber? We we'll say it is 2 chloro. You just change methyl to chloro. So for artificial rubber, it is 2 chloro buta 1 3 diene also called neoprene but for natural rubber it is two methyl buta one three diene also called isoprene so what becomes the answer option b because option b says option a and c option a and c are correct now moving over to question six it says which of the benzene derivative is used for making disinfectant Basically, the benzene derivative used for making disinfectant is called phenol. The benzene derivative used for making disinfectant is called phenol. So looking at the options, which of them here is a phenol? Option A is a phenol. A phenol is a benzene that is, that is attached to the hydroxyl functional group. So this compound, which is called phenol, can also be called hydroxyl because this is hydroxyl and this is benzene. Okay? Hydroxyl benzene. So that is the answer to um, option A is the answer to question six. Why for B? This is called toluene. Okay, because this is a methyl functional group. So methyl benzene is also called toluene. Now it must be noted that toluene can be used for making explosives like the trinitro toluene, which is TNT. Now, moving over to this, this is called xylene, okay? This is called xylene, a benzene with two methyl functional group. It is called xylene, or you say dimethylbenzene, because we're having two methyl. 
Now, why option D is called alkyl benzene sulfonoid? Now, this is used for making this detergent. Okay, this benzene derivative is used for making detergent. So, the benzene derivative used for making this effectant is called phenol, also called hydroxyl benzene. Now, looking at question seven, look at a compound here, and the question says the type of hybridization seen in the compound are. So, they are asking us the type of hybridization seen in this compound. Now, we have three common hybridization. This is sp3 hybridization, sp2 hybridization, and sp hybridization. It must be noted for a compound to be sp3 hybridized, compound must be an alkane with a single bond. But for a compound to be sp2 hybridized, the compound must be an alkene and it must be double bond. This is for alkene. Why a compound that basically is sp hybridized must be triple bonded and it is called an alkyne. Now, looking at this compound now, you can see that for this compound, this compound contains just two types of bonds, single bonds and triple bonds. Single bonds and triple bonds. So basically, this is sp3 hybridization, whereby for this, we just say it is sp hybridization. So what becomes the answer? Is it sp3 only? No. Because we have an sp3 and sp, so this won't be the answer. But basically, looking at option B, it is sp3 and sp hybridization. This is the correct answer to the question. This is the correct answer to the question. Where option C says sp only? No. We have sp3. And where option D says sp2 hybridization? No. Because we don't have any double bond here. So you can see how questions under this aspect are being tackled. Now, let's quickly move over to the next question. I'll be solving 10 questions on organic chemistry. Now, let's quickly move over to question 8. Question 8 says, which of the following compound will form a white precipitate with ammoniac silver nitrate? Now, this test is used to differentiate an alkene from an alkyne. That means a double bonded compound from a triple bonded compound. Now, it must be noted that the compounds or the group of compounds that gives a white precipitate to ammoniac silver nitrate is an alkyne. That means an alkyne, Y-N-E. But not just an alkyne, but rather a terminal alkyne. It must be noted that terminal alkynes give white precipitates to ammoniac silver nitrate. Terminal. Terminal is the answer, not median. Median alkyne is an alkyne, whereby the triple bond functional group is at the center of the compound. Now, this is what I mean for median alkyne. This is an example of a median alkyne. You can see that the triple bond functional group is at the center, but for terminal alkyne, the triple bond functional group is at the first carbon that is a terminal alkyne, or this is a terminal alkyne too. Terminal alkyne gives white precipitate to ammoniac silver nitrate. Now, let's quickly move over to the question nine. Benzene is not an aromatic compound. True or false? Benzene is an aromatic compound. So, this statement is saying benzene is not an aromatic compound. Is the statement true or is the statement false? Recall, I said benzene is an aromatic compound. So, this statement is not correct. So, basically, it becomes false. Benzene is an aromatic compound. But the question says benzene is not an aromatic compound. So, definitely, it is false because benzene is an aromatic compound. Okay? If it was benzene is an aromatic compound. So, basically, the statement would have been true. But here, I'm saying benzene is not an aromatic compound. No, benzene is an aromatic compound. So, that's why it is false. So, question 10. Alkenes, alkenes, alkynes are classified as option A, non hydrocarbon. No, alkenes, alkenes, alkynes are hydrocarbons because they contain carbon and hydrogen. So they are hydrocarbons. So here can't be the answer. Option B, hydrocarbons. This is very correct. Option C, aromatic compounds. Benzene, aromatic compounds. Benzene are aromatic compounds. And option D, paraffins too. Okay, this group of compounds are not called paraffins or classified as paraffins. It must be noted that alkanes are also regarded to be 
paraffin. So what the paraffin means? It means little reactivity. Now, these 10 questions on organic chemistry is very, very important. So you have to take note of these questions. If you like this video, do well to hit the subscribe button and also share this video with your friends. Thank you very much and God bless you.